All right. Hi, everyone. I will try and keep this short so that we can all go to uh, lunch pretty soon. So uh, my talk is hardware is the new GeoCities, uh, but a couple of disclaimers. Number one, uh, I'm not a hardware person. Uh, I write software, I make websites, I do you know stuff in that kind of realm. I also don't have any websites on GeoCities anymore because they shut it down. <laughs> or Yahoo. Uh, but the reason that I'm not a hardware person is because that it seems scary as hell to try and build anything using actual hardware. So this is what you get if you do a Google image search for hardware. Uh, I guess they made a movie of it, but I kind of feel like this is the guy that's building all of your stuff. Every time that I try and look at a circuit diagram or understand, understand a schematic or even think about what a schematic is, uh, it just seems like dark, evil magic that somebody is doing, and they're doing it really well, but I want to just kind of bang away and just hope, like I, I like compilers, and hardware doesn't have that compiler for me. So uh, I wanted to change this. So a couple of years ago, I picked up one of these. It's an Arduino. Who, who here has an Arduino or has messed around with it? OK, so there's a handful of people. So this is supposed to be your introduction to electrical engineering into circuitry. Um, and they use it a lot in schools to help teach you know, introduction to electronics uh, concepts. So it has digital analog inputs. There's a really simple IDE. You have a loop function, and you write your code in a kind of a derivative of C. But it, you, know, you teach yourself if statements. You say, turn on this LED and make it work. Well, here's kind of what happened to it. How many people that have an Arduino are still using it? One guy. Oh, one and a half, kind of. All right, good, awesome. How many people that had an Arduino is now collecting dust in a closet somewhere? <laughs> so that's way more folks. Uh, and and I, this is a consistent pattern that I've seen. That anybody who has started to work with an Arduino, um, you know, you make a couple of LEDs blink, but that's about as far as you got. That's about as far as I got. I actually tried it two independent occasions, and both times, I, you know, after a couple of days, it just lost interest. So the question that I wanted to understand is why does this happen? Why, you know, for something that should be so exciting, do we end up getting bored with it or lose interest? And you know, I just went back to software. And I think there's a couple of reasons. So first of all, the way that Arduino is designed is as a teaching tool. It's, it works really well for people that don't understand any programming or have zero interest or like have zero experience with hardware at all. But that's not who I am. Like I know how to make software I, I write code for a living. That's what I get paid for. So it seemed like a very sub, it wasn't as useful to me as for someone who, you know, a school child. But along with that, um, I, I could never come up with good ideas for what I wanted to build, either because it was, it's really easy to put information into an Arduino. Like, I can make an LED blink like nobody's business. You know, I can, I can push a button and make that LED change. I do so much work with LEDs on Arduino, but that's about as far as I got. Um, and, and some of that has to do with the language that you're using, right? So you're working with C, and I don't really know C. After I got out of college, I work in kind of higher level languages. I'm a Java guy. I'm a Ruby guy. I work in JavaScript a lot. So the fact that it was difficult to do things like networking, um, to act, you know, send information from an Arduino out to some other system, you know, bring it onto a website, that stuff isn't, you know, it's not trivial to do with the language that they give you. And that can become a problem. So recently I heard about this new project that's called Johnny5. Short circuit, kind of awesome. Uh, so Johnny5 is this library that is a JavaScript wrapper for Arduino. Uh, and what that means is that it's using a protocol called Fermata that Arduino speaks. And it provides you really simple wrappers that if you have any understanding of JavaScript, or uh, then you can write code in that language instead of C. So here's how you get started. Uh, if you have Node on your computer, which is also really simple to install, you just say npm install Johnny5, and you've got it. It's one line. So that's cool. Here's the Hello World. Uh, you can kind of see it. So what you so this is all in a single .js file. You say, give me the Johnny5 library, create a board, and whenever it's initialized, 
Uh, create an LED, have it go on digital pin 13 and strobe. And uh, this is what it looks like. So it gives you some defaults. You can change it. So again, I'm really awesome at making LEDs blink. Uh, but now, but but now you're working in a language that a lot of a lot more people have a good solid understanding of, right? JavaScript is the most popular language in the world, and now you're making this accessible to everyone. So that's kind of cool. So working with LEDs is kind of fun, but I wanted to do something beyond that, and I never really got much farther when I was working in the C li uh, library. So there's a couple of different types of inputs that I think are kind of fun. Um, the first one is a potentiometer. This is called a trim pot. And the way that it works is it's a variable resistor. So uh, this has a dial. You put some power into it. You ground it. And then another one goes into an analog in reader. Here's the code in JavaScript to make that work in Johnny 5. All that you do is you specify a sensor. You tell it what pin you want it to work and how frequently you want it to update. In this case, it's 250 milliseconds. And then every 250 milliseconds, the potentiometer event will send a, or it will send a data event, and you can bind to that. So if you've ever done any type of eventing with jQuery, this should look really familiar to you. And in this case, all that I'm doing is I'm just logging it to a console. But you don't have to do that. Because of this is Node, you now have access to every library that somebody has written in Node.js, and there's tens of thousands of them. So in this case, I wanted to try and do something with WebSockets. So this is all hooked up to a computer. My computer is hooked up to the internet. So I just say, let's require a library called Socket.io, which is a really simple wrapper for WebSockets. And I just changed a single line. I said, instead of writing to the console, send out a message on a WebSocket. And uh, it sends out the potentiometer event, and it gives, and I'm passing the raw value from like 0 to 255 that the potentiometer is measuring. And so if I twist it, it can go higher or lower. So I actually have this, uh, so I have an Arduino up here. Oh, you can kind of see what's happening. So I have the potentiometer hooked up, and it is sending information from the Arduino to my computer. My computer has a WebSocket connection to my slides. And so if I try twisting this, yeah. So you probably want to debounce it so that it's not going kind of nuts. But all right, let's bring, yeah, oh, wait, no, not quite. Uh, there we go. This is, how you, this is how I read my stuff, just page down, page down, page down. So this is kind of fun. You guys can all read this now. All right. So potentiometers. Kind of awesome. Uh, there's another type of adjustable resistor that's called a light sensor or a photo uh, resistor. And they, you know, there's a couple of different ways that they look. But depending on how much light it comes out, it, it adjusts how much resistance it applies to uh, you know, how much current it's letting through. So here's the code to make that work. Um, again, all you do is you create a sensor. In this case, it's running on the analog one circuit. I'm running it every 50 uh, milliseconds. And whenever data comes out, I'm emitting an event on WebSockets. So this is pretty straightforward again. And I'm using some simple, Johnny5 also gives you some mapping tools. Um, for some reason, the data that comes in uh, ranges from 0 to 1024. But when you want to output something, you have to go from 0 to 255. So there's some you know, basic mapping stuff. That's not kind of as interesting, though. So again, I have an Arduino that has a light sensor built in. So let's see if I can't get this to work. Awesome. So I've got a light. And wait, hang on. How about we go the other way? Can you see the background changing at all? It is really bright. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Ah, uh, so I, if I put my finger on it, then it changes the light. It's kind of subtle. So if we just turn off all the lights and close all the <laughs> blinds, it'll get really red. So that's kind of fun. So another type of sensor is this thing called a flex sensor. And it's a, just a strip uh, that has some electronics components on it. Uh, it has two wires. And you can bend it in one direction. And as you're bending it, it changes the resistance. So you can, you can kind of imagine what something like this might be used for. Uh, but before we get there, I want to start by 
playing a little game. So this is Cave Rush 2600. Slouch Couch actually made this, which is kind of awesome. Uh, but let's see if I can. So the way that this game works is it's an infinite runner. And as you tap on stuff, you can, oh, don't want to hit that. Oh, OK. So I'm going to go, oh, all right, hang on, hang on. Ah, oh, all right. So I died. But uh, if anybody remembers the power glove. <laughs> so, yeah. So I've got a flex sensor built into this. And let's see if we can't get this to work. Play again. Yeah, all right. Let's see if I. Oh, 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 OK. Get up, up. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, let's try. I, I, I can do this. Oh, oh no. Wait. Oh, OK, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh. Thing is so bad. <laughs> so and some, you know, clips and uh, so obviously there's some things that you could probably do to make this a little bit better, uh, but at last night it worked really well. <laughs> so yeah, that's the flex sensor. And again, all of this is just a handful of lines of JavaScript code. So uh, those are all just adjustable resistors, but you can do way more interesting things. So one of the things that I'm sure everybody has used is the Nintendo Wii nunchuck. Uh, and there's a couple of really nice features to this type of input. The first is that it gives you an accelerometer, so you can rotate it and you can get input from there. Uh, you also have the joystick, so you can capture that type of information. Uh, you get two different buttons, so you can hold on to those. And best part, super cheap, only $15. And you probably have a whole bunch of them that are just sitting in your house right now. <laughs> so there's um, an adapter that hooks in, and it just takes two analog inputs. And there's a Johnny5 uh, module for that. So here's all the code that you need in order to get the nunchuck to work with your Arduino. You say, create a nunchuck, update itself every 50 milliseconds. And every time the joystick registers a change event, send a log message to the console. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and again, you can do whatever you want with this. So at this point, what I have is, here we go. So I've set this up so that as I rotate, it goes around. If I move the joystick, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't make any original art for this, obviously. I just stole it. <laughs> Rotate SVG. So what's happening with this, though, is that as I'm rotating, I'm just saying, what's the current direction? And then map that from 0 to 360 degrees. And then I'm doing a CSS WebKit transform rotate uh, to automatically work this. And as I'm moving it up and down, I'm just set setting the top and uh, right uh, CSS positions to go either left or right for whatever this value is. There's really simple, like, it's really simple code, and, uh, but Oh, man, isn't this cool? <laughs> so uh, everything that I've done so far has been having the Arduino talk to a computer, send information out via WebSockets. But you can go way beyond that. So uh, there's this device called the ARR drone. It's made by Parrot. Uh, there's one right up here. Uh, this is a quadricopter, which means it has four blades and it's a helicopter. Uh, <laughs> I know. So uh, the really cool thing about the AR drone is that people have also written node modules for this. So again, to install it, you just say npm install AR drone, and then you have all the software that you need in order to get a functioning quadricopter. So here's all the code that you need if you just wanted to write a piece of JavaScript software running a node that would do your work for you. You create a client, tell it to take off, and then every x number of uh, milliseconds, it does something. So in this case, it's going to rotate clockwise. It'll try and do a flip, and then it'll land. So that's kind of fun, but that's not very interactive. So now comes the really fun part of the demo. This is all the WebSocket stuff that's happening. Let me shut this off. 
Uh, and then for those of you that are in the front, you might want to duck down, because I'm not positive this is going to work. <laughs> so running node copter.js, it's going to connect. This is connecting to, yeah, so this is connecting to my helicopter. Steer clear. All right, I'm going to push a button. Take off. All right. Go up a little bit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait. Oh, oh no. Oh. I'm going to try that a second time, but I've already had one of these holes destroyed, and I don't want to do it again. So yeah, the, the code for this is ridiculously simple as well. So let's get back to the slides. OK. So let's, so obviously this is super fun, but it's time for us to you know, have some serious talk. So. Do you really want to be programming hardware in JavaScript? Uh, this is a language that is known for having significant warts. You know, the joke is that the JavaScript, the good parts book, is like 30 pages long, right? And, and I think some people, there are legitimate questions behind this, right? So would you want to write real, like, in program real hardware with this? And a lot of people, if you ask them about it, the answer is no, right? <laughs> So there's a couple of initiatives to try and get more, like a lot of people are starting to do this, you know, stupid JavaScript stuff on hardware. And people that are real electrical engineers tell you, you know, this is dumb. Just learn the actual microcontroller language. You know, start off with an Arduino, but, and then go into lower level languages instead of higher level languages. But I think that misses one of the really important advantages that JavaScript has, and in particular that Johnny Five gives you, that you can't do with other types of hardware programming environments. And that's just that it's stupid easy to get started. Right? I did all of this in the course of a week, and I am really dumb at this, and I'm you know, almost destroying everything along the way. But the ease factor of this is really important. And to explain why, I think we have to go back in time about 15 years to think about GeoCities. So who here had a website on GeoCities or Lycos or one of those along the way? So that was one of my first websites. I actually had two, one that was a Simpsons homepage, like fan page, and one that was a Star Wars fan page. And they were awesome. <laughs> so here's the type of editor that you got when you worked in GeoCities. It was a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So you can just add in you know, what types of headers you want. Uh, you can change your fonts, always Comic Sans. Uh, you can add in images, always an animated under construction GIF. Uh, and then you can add in what additional features, always a couple of marquee and blink tags. So no real programmer would actually use this for building a website, right? It doesn't give you the power, the flexibility. But it gives you, but for somebody who is a complete neophyte to an environment, it provides a really easy, uh, like it removes every barrier to entry that you would have access to. So this is one of the first websites that I ever made. This is actually still running on the internet. Uh, <laughs> back in 1999, pokecards.adam.com, I was really big into the Pokemon trading card game. And if I look back, I was doing everything wrong here. So all of this, tables for layouts, yeah. Uh, all of these are just changing the font tag itself. Uh, no, like all, I don't think I'm using any CSS, it's just like body, BG color equals whatever. So, like, I look back on this and I realize that I'm doing everything in a completely non-sustainable, non-professional way, but holy crap, this was e easy to get set up. There's a really great Tumblr called Web Designer's First Websites, and I'm glad to see that I'm not the only one that had a Pokemon obsession back in the day. <laughs> But the way that this Tumblr works is that people submit the first website that they ever created. Usually they're about 10, 15 years old, uh, and they all look atrocious. But this is the way that people first get into an environment, is you start off with the simplest types of tools that could possibly work. No professional would actually use it, but then you kind of learn from there. 
So if you look at some of the examples, like this one doesn't look too bad, but it's all done with tables as layouts. You know, the, the graphics on it, you know, they don't clash well. But now these people are getting paid, like this is what their living is. So it's really, it, so the path from going from easy, stupid language tools to things that a professional would use becomes very straightforward. This is another one that I really like. Um, the things you can't see is that these basketballs are actually animating. They're bouncing up and down for all eternity, which is great. But that's why I say that hardware is the new GeoCities, because everything that you need to do on this costs you an Arduino, which a lot of people already have, and you have to know the most popular programming language in the world. And that's it. So there's a couple of things that you can do right now to get started. Uh, first of all, try downloading Johnny5. It's five minutes to work. You can probably do it over lunch if you have access to it. But then from there, uh, learn some actual computer engineering like electrical skills. So for me, that was understanding the difference between voltage, current, and resistance. Like I said, this is the third time that I mess with Arduinos, but this is the first time that I actually thought about any of those concepts because in order to understand how to get that flex sensor to work, I had to know the right resistance value to use. So understanding you know, things that are elementary to people with actual degrees in electrical engineering, like Ohm's Law, you, you understand that more. You, know, you can get to a slightly more advanced stuff, like how to calculate a voltage divider, which some of these things need to know as well. But again, you know, these are the really straightforward ways to, to learn. Sparkphone has a lot of really great tutorials on this. From there, you can kind of level up and actually start learning the, the underlying API. Right? You don't want to write professional code in Johnny5, but once you get to a point where you're familiar with it, then start writing actual C, or maybe even the microcontroller language that the Arduino is based off of. And then there's a whole bunch of other tools that you can do. You can actually learn how to, pro like how to you know, melt lead and solder stuff together. Obviously, I did not do that for this particular tool. There's no way that this is going to get past airport security. Uh, but, but soldering is a really great tool. And then finally, once you have an understanding of that, just join one of your communities. And the one that we have in town is the Omaha Maker Group. Um, and they can teach you everything from how, how to make better use of your Arduino to lock picking to robot operating systems, you know, all kinds of really amazing stuff. So uh, that's the thing that I've been really fun and had a great time doing recently. And that's all that I got. Thanks a lot.